Hey folks, Wednesday evening. So um, yesterday um, I had a meeting with a customer of mine at JJ Fox's and we spent uh, a very quick hour, hour and a half, something like that, hour and a quarter. And as always with these meetings, time flies. We had a great time. Um, I do have a video. I did some recording. There's a lot of background noise, so um, hopefully it'll still be audible enough um, to hear the chat that went on. Uh, but anyway, um, so whilst I was there, I bought a couple of cigars. I don't buy Cuban cigars very often, certainly not retail. Um, I mean, I do buy retail from websites, but I don't often go into town anymore. Um, it's, it's probably been like a year since I've been there. Um, so I've got two cigars. And it was really nice to catch up with the staff. I recognized one member of staff. So they, I don't know if they've had change rounds or maybe it was the time of day that I was there. All right, so I bought a Rafael Gonzalez, which is, this is apparently a new Vitola. Um, it's, uh, it looks a bit like a Robusto, maybe a little bit longer than a Robusto. Um, or a Robusto. No, it's bang on five inches, so that must be a Robusto. Um, so there's that one, and then there's this cigar which is a Pyramides, a number two size. So that's, I think, six by 50. Or six and a bit, six and a bit by 50, maybe. No, it's bang on six inches. So that's a, a number two Vitola in the Cuban size range. Um, and this is um, JJ Fox's own house blend. This is uh, something which they have started recently in the last year or two. And I took the liberty of taking a photo of the information that they have. And I printed it out so I could read it out to you guys. <clears throat> so I'll just read it out to you quickly. Paying homage to our long-standing long -standing history at 19 St. James's Street as merchants of the finest tobacco, you'll be intrigued by the traditional presentation of our cigars, exuding an aura of nostalgia. They forego bands and boxes, instead adorned with a simple yellow ribbon symbolic of a bygone era when cigars were showcased and sold like this. So if you've uh, been into cigars for a long time, you'll know that up to a certain point in time, I don't know the exact dates, but maybe the 50s or the 60s, maybe even later, the 70s, when you bought a box of cigars, certainly a, a slide box or something like that, um, the cigars would be completely naked in there and it would look like that. So they're kind of going back to that tradition. To be honest, I personally think it's a money saving thing, but they're presenting it in this way. Maybe it is the, the actual reason, but I, I assume it's a money saving thing, which is good because they actually sold it at a reasonable price. I think it was £26, which nowadays is, is cheap for a Cuban cigar. Uh, we take pride in, present, in presenting the only cigars currently in production that have been conceived and developed exclusively for the discerning UK palate. We believe in the evolution of flavour to be fundamental to achieving this as well as ensuring the level of burn consistency and construction synonymous with New World cigars. During our sampling of the final product, we were confident that the cigar has met the specification. We are excited for cigar enthusiasts all over the world to enjoy our latest foray into the UK cigar market. This talks a little bit more about the cigar itself. James J. Fox are delighted to introduce a new collection of cigars, the Fox House Blend, demonstrating our desire to create exceptional cigar experiences this collection signifies another landmark occasion in our illustrious history as one of the world's most distinguished cigar merchants. Our journey began with a clear objective, to create a cigar that delivers complexity of flavors with evolution throughout through every stage. We gathered a sampling team of six with more than 100 years of combined experience in the cigar industry to curate a blend that stands apart from other cigars currently in the market. With this brief, we collaborated with Oscar Valadera's and Hamlet Paredes to source the tobacco and, the, and, and oversee the production. After numerous blending and sampling sessions during a development period of more than two years, including director Rob Fox's trips to Central America, we unanimously agreed on this exceptional blend. We are particularly proud of the fact that we will be continuing the tradition of generations gone by, blending, importing, and bringing to market cigars specially tailored to our customers' preferences. That sounds really, really nice. Um, 
in actual fact that them talking about uh, landmarks in JJ Fox's history um, during the time that of my absence anyway they've completely refurbished uh, the humidor the the humidor is brand new they've put a brand new humidor in there which is very very nice and they really had a really nice selection of cigars um, I did actually record a little clip in the humidor which um, I'll when I get a chance to put that video together of my meeting I'll add that clip in as well so you can have a look at the humidor a bit and you'll see also the very nice display of these house cigars they've got um, really nice uh, you know the bundles that you could buy when you look at uh, videos or pictures of um, cigar factories you see the you know shelves and shelves and rows and rows of these tied up bundles of 50 or 25 in that sort of uh, trapezoid shape or something like that um, so they had those stacked up to really look traditional looked very very effective um, anyway so you'll see that in the in the video once it goes up so just deciding which one to smoke really um, I've given this such an introduction that I, it behooves me to really smoke this one doesn't it um, I better put that in the top of the door well, I'll do that soon what was this? This was the Partibus D4 a couple of days ago. Um, I'm not getting a huge amount off the wrapper. Um, it's kind of a, a cocoa coloured um, wrapper. It looks really good. Um, it feels bouncy. Um, I think the advantage of it not having a band somehow or other with Cuban cigars, a lot of the times when they got a bit tight or a little bit blocked, it always tended to be around where the band was. And I don't know if that's some kind of chemical reaction or if it's the fact that it doesn't get light or, or maybe the fact that in the beginning it's, you know, when it's glued, it's glued too tight or possibly after it's sort of settled in the band, then maybe the cigar expands and it gets too tight, you know, against the, the glued band. I don't know. So these not having a band, maybe there's an advantage. Okay, these are New World anyway, so they should be fine construction-wise. Um, in terms of aroma on the band, it's sort of a, a dry, very dry cocoa, almost a savoury cocoa. A little bit of spice. Um, when I um, when I was in there, I spoke to the sommelier. I asked him for his card. It says Nick Barker. Um, I'm not sure if that was his name, or uh, I seem to. I thought he had. Maybe this was just somebody else's card. I don't know. Um, or maybe this was him. I'm not entirely sure. But um, I asked him what the profile was, and he said a bit of a sweet spice kind of thing, earthy, leathery, but not coffee and that kind of thing. On the foot, the aroma is peppery, like a sweet pepper, sweet spice. Definitely earthy, quite savory, a little bit snuffy. Um, but he did say to me that there isn't really a coffee or a chocolate flavor. It's more um, like a sun-grown type of flavor, like spicy, sweet spice. Generally speaking, the advice is when you cut a pyramides, when you cut a tapered uh, cap, the head of the cigar, you cut it at an angle. The reason for that is that obviously you don't wanna to go too far down because then you end up unraveling the cigar. If you cut it at an angle like that, then you have more square footage, if you like, or square incherage <laughs> um, that's actually cut. So if you cut it lower down to get the same area, you'd have to cut it quite a bit lower down, which is, you know, risky because you might start unraveling the cigar. So you can do it higher up, but you do it at an angle, you still get the same throughput because you've got a wider area, surface area, which has been cut. Very good draw. Again, the, the pre the pre light draw flavors savory. Again, I hope the smoke is going to be sweeter. Quite savory. A little bit of.
pepper there. He said that it wasn't a peppery smoke. I told him that I don't like peppery smokes. And he said that's exactly what it's not supposed to be. He said this is supposed to be more, um, you know, not traditional New World cigar style. Um, uh, you know, in America, there's a big following of hot, spicy, peppery kind of smokes. Um, and this is not that. This is more to be suited to the British palate. So let's get it lit. I must be honest, the last few cigars I've taken to using a torch. Um, and it's kind of, it's kind of an experiment for me. Um, traditionally, I've always used the soft flame, certainly at the beginning of a cigar. kind of working with a theory at the moment, although I, I haven't got any, my mind isn't made up, but I'm working with a theory that perhaps using a soft flame, you have to hold it for so much longer and puff on it longer to get it going because it's a softer flame, a cooler flame, that you possibly overheat the cigar. Whereas with a torch, you can just blast it and go. Obviously the danger is because it's a torch that you kind of overheating or burning uh, the foot of the cigar, but it's, I'm experimenting. I see some YouTubers always using a torch and I've seen some old traditional cigar smokers, people from Hunters and Frank Cowan, you know, people like that, literally just using matches, nothing else. When I watch the Sahakians, Edward and Eddie, they're using matches, generally speaking. Occasionally lighters, but generally matches. So first off, really quite mild. A little bit of um, spice there. The draw's pretty much spot on. There's a bit of a herby uh, flavor coming through. set it down for a bit well whatever the verdict is at the end of this video construction wise I was really just flabbergasted my daughter wanted to do some work on the computer you can see there's a different backdrop because she was using her user um, she was in here for maybe five seven minutes I was a bit apprehensive because I didn't want the cigar to go out um, and I can't smoke in any other room other than this room anyway I went downstairs Come back out five, seven, eight minutes later, still alight. Only just. It's about to go out. It's funny that because when I first picked it up, it produced smoke, but then I can blow through it, but I can't draw any smoke through it. I can blow out, but not in. So anyway, I'm going to have to relight it. Um, first third in, it ashed by itself earlier on. Um, quite mild. Quite generic, if I'm honest. There was quite a green herby taste at, at the beginning, but that's kind of dissipated now, and now it's really quite just mild and generic.
gets a little bit fuller if you draw in deeper and, and get more smoke in your mouth, which is understandable. But sometimes you just want to sip on a cigar and um, when you do that, the flavor is definitely a lot, lot milder. Some cigars need to be drawn on heav more heavily to get the best out of it. And this maybe is one of those. A little bit of an oily residue in the tongue, which is really nice. It's always nice to have that. There is still a hint of that green herby flavor, just not as pronounced as it was. There's a, a hint of an undertone of a savory kind of flavor, like a dry, like a walnut shell, you know, the inner shell, the inner, that really dry stuff. Sometimes you eat it along with the nuts and you get that really dry flavor. Um, that savory dry flavor, that's kind of, you get a little bit of that. But there is still a hint of, of spicy, sweet, sweet, sweet spiciness. Oh, spicy sweetness. Um, but it's, I'm not getting a pronounced identity yet, a DNA coming through. Um, it's very, as I say, quite generic at the moment. Pleasant. I'm enjoying it. It's, it's, uh, there's no unpleasantness about it. It's, you know, an easygoing, mild, fairly generic, um, maybe a touch more spicy than a Connecticut, perhaps. But um, other than that, I'm waiting for uh, some sparks still to fly. Let's hope they do. Alrighty, folks. Approaching the final third. And um, I've got to say that it is improving. Um, I, I would say this stage that I'm at now, um, it feels more harmonious, uh, more well balanced, a very slight increase in fullness. A little bit more sweetness coming through. It does feel it's a little bit on a knife edge where it could turn and get a little bit ashy, but it's holding its own. The burn line has been just phenomenal throughout. Ash is a bit flaky, it, it ashes quite easily. <clears throat> so far it's ashed each time on its own. Red rail is quite full. And every so often, every so often I get a very slight Cubanesque kind of tang, but it's not very pronounced. There's some interesting things happening with this cigar. Um, Um, at the moment, I'm getting that sort of herby, vegetally kind of flavour, but it's got a subtle sweetness to it as well, which is actually very nice. That um, dry um, walnut pith kind of flavor seems to have gone um, and it's really um, about that herb type of flavor with a little bit of sweetness um, I'm still trying to get my head around what its DNA is what this sort of central sort of core theme there is to this cigar what's the main flavor um, and it kind of changes. So I guess there is quite an evolution as you smoke down the cigar. Um, but I think I would still have to say that it's quite a, a generic flavor, but it has some enhancements above that generic sort of line that runs through it, like that sort of sweet herby flavor, which is just sort of raises up the level a notch to be um, just, you know, somewhat better than your average generic New World Cigar.
When I spoke to the Somalia in JJ Foxes, he told me, not peppery. And I said to him, I really do not like the really hot chili peppery, the really sort of spicy heat that you get with some of the cigars, like some of the Rocky Patels and things like that. Um, and he said, no, definitely not. He, specifically not in this cigar. And I'm pleased to say that he's right. There is really um, no significant peppery uh, flavor or heat that comes from the cigar. That would have been a, a real turnoff for me. It is a bit of an, on a knife, knife edge, as I said before. Um, I'm gonna set it down, I just, I don't want it to overheat. Um, I saw a couple of Vitolas. There was the number two, there was a Robusto. Um, and I'm not sure what the other side was. It was probably like a Corona or a half Corona, but I don't recall. Um, but it would be interesting to see what this would be like in the, in the Robusto. Um, I think that might suit me better in terms of um, the uh, length and how long it takes to smoke the cigar. When I went out before and I came back in, there was a nice room note. Um, it was kind of a nice, warm, cigar-y aroma. Um, it wasn't an offensive aroma, it was a really nice, like walking into a cigar merchant's. It was good. Construction is really superb. I can't, uh, in, in the beginning, it, it took a bit of time to get going, maybe. Um, you know, till you got a little, a decent bit of smoke coming through. It was a little bit lightweight in, in the smoke stakes initially, but now it's plumes of smoke. Catch you soon. Approaching the end of the cigar, well into the final third, and I've kind of found a nice balance. Slowly sipping on the cigar, and um, certainly if I draw deeply, I'll get a, a richer, stronger, fuller flavor, but what I found is sipping on the cigar um, just gives a nice, smooth, very pleasant, enjoyable smoke. There's enough fullness in the final third that you don't need to draw deeply. Um, and you can enjoy it just with normal sipping, gently not sipping too often, just, you know, taking a very leisurely approach to this cigar. And what you get is a little bit of an oily residue on the tongue, a little bit of that herby flavor with a bit of sweetness. And the retrohale is actually quite powerful, but if you temper it and you just do a gentle retrohale, it adds a very nice flavor, a little bit of tang, and you do get this little very pleasant finish on the tongue, which is brought about by that oily sort of residue. It is actually very pleasant now. It's uh, warming up as it comes towards the end and um, it's actually quite Moorish. I have to resist the temptation to keep on drawing on it. All right, so I'm going to summarize because, uh, as I say, we're virtually at the end. Excuse the background noise, I'm in the middle of printing something. Um, so let's go to visual construction. Um, I do like the Pyramides, I like the, the number two Vitola. Um, as I said, a, a kind of a cocoa kind of color, chocolatey kind of color. Um, in terms of the, the uh, sort of the seams and, and uh, veins and stuff like that, it's, it's fairly rudimentary, it's, it's nothing special, but it's perfectly nice. Um, there, was no, there was nothing untoward, um, so a very pleasant cigar to look at. Um, that sort of um, dry flavor that we had at the beginning is kind of, seems to suit this kind of matte uh, kind of look to the cigar, although there's a little bit of sheen on it, it has this kind of velvety matte kind of look on the wrapper, which I think really suits the overall profile of the cigar. 
I don't think I've ever, ever said that about a cigar. I guess it's the experience of the cigar that kind of makes you think that, you know, it's, it feeds into your thought process. Um, so visual construction for me is perfectly nice. It's average, you know, really nothing wrong with it, nothing mind blowing. Um, so for me, a seven, seven and a half out of 10 for visual construction. Uh, for mechanical construction, um, very good. Some highlights and some, you know, average like, um, sort of notes to mention. So the burn line has just been exceptional, really just exceptional throughout. Um, I did find at the beginning that um, despite drawing quite a bit, I wasn't getting a lot of smoke through, but that changed sort of past the halfway mark and it was blowing out smoke. Um, so kind of a, a game of two halves there when it comes to smoke output. Um, in terms of combustion, it kind of went hand in hand with that. So at one stage, like I said, when I went out, came back and it was still lit. Um, that was re that impressed me greatly. Um, so combustion there was very good, but at the same time, drawing on it, I couldn't really get much smoke through um, at that stage. So um, the draw, excellent. Um, even a little bit, maybe a fraction too open at, at times, but overall, pretty much spot on. Loads of smoke now. There you go, it's ashed again. The ash quite flaky on this, really. Um, I'm assuming that it's long filler. I'd be very surprised if it wasn't. But the way it's ashing, I might be led to think that it was maybe not such long uh, leaves in there. But um, whatever the case may be, and I'm sure it is long filler, um, but it's an ashy, um, a flaky kind of ash. Anyway, mechanical construction for me is I'm going to go for an eight, eight and a half out of ten. Overall, a very well constructed signal. Flavors, um, as I said before, I found it hard to really get my head around a DNA um, to really say what kind of cigar this is. Um, and it was really evolving throughout the cigar. Um, not necessarily building, but just evolving. There wasn't a, a coherent progression throughout the cigar, but there were changes. Um, so flavors in the beginning, um, it was um, quite uh, sort of green tea, herby kind of flavors together with that really dry, very sort of walnut pith kind of flavor, really dry, savory um, sensation and flavor. Um, that settled down, it smoothed out, and for the middle third, I would say it was really quite vague, quite mild and um, very generic, as I said before. Um, and um, in the final third, really, it started to just really seem to just find its where it, where it wanted to be kind of thing. Uh, very smooth, um, a little bit of the herby flavor, a little, a little bit of the sweet flavor, um, quite a fiery retrohale, which I kind of took slow. Um, Overall, I would say the flavor is quite generic, but with highlights. So there were times when it had a really nice little bit of sweetness mixed in with that generic kind of flavor, which really just elevated it just a touch above some really bargain basement uh, sort of economic New World cigars. And I think the way, obviously, I would reiterate that you need to take it slow in order to not allow it to turn and become bitter. Um, but if you if you manage the smoke um, and you take it easy, um, I think that this is um, a mild cigar, but it has really some very nice elements to it. And it has a refined, that's a good word, it has a refined feel to the cigar, as long as you take it slow. That's how I uh, feel, about, that's what I feel about this cigar, that it's, as I say, it's got this smooth, velvety, refined kind of attitude, um, as long as you don't push it too hard. Even at this stage, it's still very nice. Getting a little bit more of a, a sweet spice. That um, sort of um, sun-grown flavor wasn't present enough for me. Um, I, I, the guy in the, in, the, in the shop said that 
you know, that's what it is. It's a kind of a sun-grown profile. Um, I would have liked more of that. I'm getting it more now, but um, that sweet spice is not pronounced enough. Um, it could very well be that over time, maybe sits in the humidor a bit longer and stuff like that, but it's been sitting in the professional humidor at JJ Fox's for however long they've had it, so um, condition-wise, it would have been in perfect condition. So, um, for me, it could have done with a little bit more of that sun-grown spice. So flavors, I'm gonna go seven and a half out of 10 for flavors on this one. Um, I think that um, I possibly would buy it again. Maybe I'll try the Robusta next time, um, but I'm not sort of, uh, it hasn't blown me away. It's a, it's a, you know, it's one of those types of smoke, which I think you'd probably have to smoke quite a few of them to really get, to really get them, to get what their raison d'etre is exactly, to get that profile and understand what the profile is. Uh, so overall, Mark, I think a seven and a half out of ten. Um, uh, fairly average, but with highlights. With uh, I think it's a, above average, and it has that refined attitude. If you can sort of understand what I'm trying to say with that. Um, but um, overall, I've enjoyed it. It's a good long smoke. You can really enjoy it for a couple of hours, depending on how you smoke your cigars. If you're a bit of a faster smoker, you know, you might get an hour out of it, something like that, an hour and a quarter. Um, but for me, um, an hour and a half, an hour and three quarters, easily. But well, I hope you've enjoyed that. That's the JJ Fox um, House Blend, um, or it's called the Fox House Blend. Um, thanks very much for watching. Catch you on the next one.